it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 118044 or SMS FIRST to 49267. Very warm welcome to Afternoon Express. Finally, we've been waiting for it. We all wait for four o'clock. It's this time. <laughs> I'm Jeannie D. I'm Bonang Madeva. And today we are discussing fashion and beauty. So you can imagine, to my surprise, when this thing walks into the studio wearing <laughs> the guns on fleek. <laughs> those kittens were basically purring at me from the word go. I'm going to need them at some You point. can have all of me, baby. I always say you can have all of me. And talking about beauty and fashion mm. is going to be absolutely fantastic today in the loft. We're going to be looking at some of the crazy things women have done to make sure they look the part. And today we're very excited to welcome fashion director Alexis Sheffe May, who's going to introduce to us a brand new mm -hmm. fashion series proudly brought to you by Skip right here in the loft. Going to be telling you how you can find your signature style, all that and more. So really looking forward to that one. Signature style? <laughs> I'm upset about that. <laughs> Remember, you can also be chatting to us throughout the show. Our Twitter handle is at Afternoon, uh, afternoon, afternoon Chat. chat. That's what Hashtag it is. Afternoon Express. <laughs> and on Facebook and Instagram, it's Afternoon Express. We'd love to hear from you. Also, we've invited the fairest, most beautiful woman in all the land to our love today. And we're going to be chatting to her in just a bit. But first, let's have a look and see what Bunny's up to in the kitchen. Thank you, ladies. There's definitely lots cooking in this kitchen. And to celebrate our fashion and style moment is Miss Jelly Button herself joining us in the loft today. Welcome. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. And I know you've brought your latest range to showcase for us later. Yes, it's the current collection. It's the Ready to Wear Philosophy collection. So um, let's have a look at it. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. Thank you. And of course, our chef extraordinaire, Claire, crowned dessert queen. Ooh, okay. I see you've got some finger biscuits here, which are my childhood favorite. Oh, what they are? We are? Mm -hmm. oh, so finger biscuits means tiramisu. So we've got two of our Italian favorites, tiramisu and panna cotta, uh -huh. banged it into one. Because why have two when you can just put it all together and eat it as one? Delicious. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Sounds delicious. <laughs> but for now, let's join Jeannie on the couch with our first guest. Thanks, Bunny. In 2011, she was crowned Miss South Africa, and her career has flourished ever since. Not only has she appeared in numerous, t in numerous TV programs, including hosting Pasella, but she also started the Womentality program, which runs workshops to provide guidance and leadership for young women across the country. Joining us now on the couch is the gorgeous Melinda Bam. Welcome. Hello, Jeannie. <laughs> How fabulous are you looking? But do you ever have a bad day? Of course, everyone does. Come on. A rough day, like you no don't, makeup. You don't wake up looking like this. None of us do. Come I on. I totally woke up yes, like this. Yes, we do. Do. <laughs> Okay. Six months, well, just over six months, mm. you married the love of your life, Adrian Berg. Oh. <laughs> and he was actually crowned Mr. South Africa the year you were crowned Miss South Africa. Yes. It's very cheesy. And we always say it's exceptionally cheesy. But you know what? It's our life. And... and I think people always think, oh, Mrs. South Africa, Miss South Africa, poof, and it just worked. And it's, it's so much more than that, because he saw me when I was still no one and when I was still a student and when he was still in varsity. And I think that's where, where true love actually sprouts from. It's not from the industry necessarily. It's from seeing, some, seeing something in someone before the rest of the world does. Yeah, well, mm. you really do have that fairy tale kind of story, but it wasn't, you know, through Mr. and Miss South Africa that you met. It was through university, like you mentioned. Yeah, he saw me during university. We always joke about it and say, no, he was like a world-class stalker because he actually saw me four years before I actually met him, and he knew all about me, and I didn't have a clue who he was or that he existed, oh, wow. for that matter. And then we met four years later when I entered Miss South Africa and through a mutual friend, and then it, I was just love struck from there. Oh, so he had had his eye on you yes. already. He had already mm. planned, like, that's my girl. To the T. So Everything. then, how did he romantic. actually make it from, uh, official? He went to yoga class to meet me, which is very corny and very cheesy no. once again, yes. Very so he big knew that you were in a yoga class with a friend? Yes, yes. And then he went to the yoga class, and we ended up actually falling on our faces laughing. And, yeah, I don't know. It was just tickets from there. And I ever since love. then, it's ah. been just... Epic bliss. It has been, yes. I've really married the love of my life and he's everything. He's, he's really the, the best support that I could possibly imagine. And my best friend. And we have 
so much fun. I think when the world takes you so seriously, sometimes you need to have someone that doesn't take you seriously, that actually really just wants to take a really big laugh at you and really and really almost sometimes embarrass you and bring out the <laughs> bring out that raw childhood um, childhood fun, uh, fun and fun. love. Yes, yeah. of course, and that's what we do. So you know, I like that old saying: if you can travel with someone, you yes. know that you can marry them. Yes. Now, not only do you and Adrian obviously travel very well, but you also happen to travel very well on a bicycle seat across yes. the country. Please yes. tell me what was going on in that pretty little head of yours. Not, not much, actually. <laughs> when we signed up for the Sun City to Table Bay, we, we didn't actually realise what we were signing up for. We ended if up I can just tell the audience, Sun City in Johannesburg to, table bay. to the Table Bay yes. in Cape Town on a bicycle. <laughs> yes, with a beautiful view of his behind, of course, <laughs> which kept me going all the way. We did about 220 k's a day, and that was marvelous. And everyone actually kind of joked around and said, okay, well, if you can do this, then you can get married. And well, he used to say, we know that happened then. So, was it on a tandem bike? No, on our own little two bikes, cycling and getting some muscle going on there. And I thought, oh my goodness, by the time I get to Cape Town, I'm gonna have the most amazing and slender physique and the most amazing elongated muscles in my legs. And then I picked up 5Ks and I was devastated and I vowed to never get on a bike again, which I of course then did, but whatever. No, it was amazing, it was an amazing experience. So cycling's not really your thing anymore? No, I do like it, but I wouldn't say I'm gonna do 220 here a day again very soon. Ever again, perhaps? No. <laughs> yeah, that, that is very brave though, well done. Mm. What I do love about you is that, and I remember since you won Miss South Africa, you are a smart girl. I mean, you have the looks and you have the beauty and the elegance and you're sweet, but what people don't notice is behind all that beauty is a serious, like, businesswoman. I think you I can be smart. quite philosoph philosophical, perhaps, rather. I, I enjoy uh, the company that we started, with Mentality, and I think that's my, my, my biggest love in this industry. Mm. Um, and it's something that is very rewarding because it's not airy-fairy, it's not pretentious, it's, not, it's, an almost, it's almost very different to this industry sometimes, and that's the thing that I enjoy most. It's being real and being able to engage with an audience on, a, on, a, on something that really um, equips them and empowers them, and that's something that really drives me because yeah. um, it's got lasting value to it. Well, Woman Womentality is a program that Melinda Band put together, and I've been very honored to be a guest speaker for you before, but for our viewers at home, explain what exactly the pro Womentality program is. Well, the whole program has been composed to cultivate a very positive mentality in a young female mind. And in our industry, we get advice from experts, and you would know, and Benang would know, we get advice from stylists and from dermatologists and psychologists, and. Um, dietitians and uh, nutritional experts and we get all this advice but young women sitting at home don't always actually get access to this and that's where we really started putting this program together to make that kind of advice accessible to everyone uh, to such an extent that it really empowers young women to really discover their their full potential from a very young age and to say okay well I know exactly what I have I know exactly what talents I've been given I know exactly what I want to do with it in life and then have the guts to actually do it and that's the biggest drive behind the whole project is to make sure that women develop a mindset that is that is really uh, self-reliant as well to say Absolutely. you know what everything that I will ever be is already inside of me and it's just a matter of fact and actually believing in it and putting it into action. That is amazing. Now did you only feel like you had access to that from winning Miss South Africa or mm. is it something like the way you were raised perhaps that made you quite astute and and so forward driven. You know what, I think I've always been driven in life, but I think I had access to that advice from winning Miss South Africa because before that I was quite a tomboy. My goodness, I didn't know about high heels and dresses and all of those things. And then I started modeling and I had a little bit more of a love for that de uh, developing there. But since I became a South Africa, I realized that there's so much more to this industry. And sometimes people have this big expectation of what it has or what it entails. And it's a complete misconception about the whole thing. Mm. And uh, being able to break down those stereotypes and also having a clearer view on, on what different opportunities life has to offer I think that's really that's really something. That's really a, a way of empowering um, other women. And ultimately, I think it isn't easy to be a woman in South Africa. 
we've got a very difficult um, race to, to run in SA. If we look at some statistics, I mean, we've got 2.9% of women um, obtaining CEO status in South Africa. We've got 7.6% of women who have who have directorship. 2.9% <coughs> of women have, or the unemployment rate is higher for women in South Africa than it is for men. So no. for us to be able to empower other women to make a bigger career for themselves and to be able to say, you know what, if you're not going to believe in yourself, no one else will, so you better start believing. So that yeah. to me is something that I just love. Melinda Bell, ah, you certainly are an astute and inspirational young woman. Thank you so much for chatting to us. But don't go away. Stay on our couch. We're gonna, we've mm. got something for you a little bit later. I've got a surprise for you, so don't move. And you also stay glued to your screen because after the break, we explore the sweeter side of Italy in the kitchen. Express Welcome back, you're still on SABC3 on Afternoon Express. And in, just, in case you just tuned in, well, you're just in time because we're about to get into step one of our delicious dessert today. And I'm in the kitchen with our resident chef, Queen. How you doing, Claire? Good, very good. I know good. we're going to Italy today, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing uh, two desserts in one. A tiramisu panna cotta. So like I said earlier, okay. why have two when you can just put them together and make one? All right, so let's it's, do this. It makes for faster eating as well. Come for food. <laughs> it's all about being warm and fuzzy and delicious. What's step one? Okay, so we're gonna just put all of our liquids into this already heated pan. So that goes our milk. Milk. This goes our cream in here. You don't want to overcook the cream too much because uh -huh. that's gonna change the consistency quite a bit. Then we go uh, all of our sugar <laughs> in there. <laughs> okay. A whole lot of sugar. Don't be scared. Uh huh. This is dessert after all. So Claire, you're not telling us we're not measuring. You're not giving us, you know, milliliters. Nothing at all. You're just plonking. That's the cool part about the Facebook and wedding sites. You gotta go on there to go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And what is that? Cocoa. Th that's cocoa. So that's roughly about a cup of cocoa. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna start stirring that. If you want to go ahead and grab the vanilla. Vanilla essence. You can just drop a little bit in there. All right. So we're gonna heat that up and just is, really. Is that a little bit? Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. There go for you that. Go. That's probably about a teaspoon and a half. Mm -hmm. And then really just want to melt the sugar and just melt into that that <sighs> cocoa. So that cocoa is what you, what's going to give us that really rich chocolatey flavor, mm. and that's sort of quite a signature flavor in a tiramisu. Later comes the next very signature um, item of a tiramisu, which is the mascarpone yes, cream. Yes, so that's what I know with the yes. tiramisu. Okay. And then in the second part, we're going to make a delicious coffee sauce. <sighs> so typically, a panna cotta is a set cream dessert. Yes. So that's kind of it. You can see it's the cocoa is melted in. The sugar, I can feel oh, by whisking it, it's smells. pretty much melted in. And then we're going to... Oh, actually, do you want me to help you stir yeah, while you do something else? I was just going to say, else? we're going to swap out there. Mm -hmm. We're just going to... So you must keep stirring. Always, always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep stirring because that's going to stop the lumps from forming. Uh -huh. So what we do to set it is we use gelatine. So you put it in a little bit of uh, water to what we call bloom it. And that allows the gelatine to just soak up a little bit of the water. And then harden. And no, and then we add it to the hot yeah. liquid. It dissolves uh -huh. in and then as it cools, it sets it up. All right. Yeah. So this will need, obviously, to get pop into the fridge for a little Exactly. Bit. Right. You don't want to add gelatine to a pot when it's on the boil and bubbling. So okay. we have made some earlier just for the sake of us being able to eat some later. So it does take yes. about three or four hours or if you've got the time overnight to set in the fridge. So once this is, is done, you That's take it off the... Exactly. Okay. So we've, I've already taken the heat off. Uh -huh. See, you can see it's already started to absorb all that liquid. It's getting a bit thick and stodgy. And, see. and then that goes into it. I'm going to get you to mix it all up again. Mm -hmm. And then, without it smells divine. Burn, and it, it without burning, burning, without girl, burning ourselves yet, you can girl. hold on to it. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> All right. And then we just strain it, just to make sure that the the lumps from the cocoa powder out, mm -hmm. the sugar is dissolved, mm -hmm. and especially that gelatin. You want it to make sure it's all mixed in there. That gets just strained through into there. I wish I could just, I don't know, sort of like uh, send the smell through the cameras. Oh, don't you just? It really is divine. So just get rid of that. Mm -hmm. And you can see there that stuff does sort of stay behind a little bit of the the lumps. There we go. Let's That'll be perfect because you don't want to get those lumps through. And then we're just going to put it into our, our glasses. You can put it in anything you want. Okay. You can put it in a little bowl, you can, you can in a jar, in, in a glass, mm -hmm. whatever you like. All so right. we've just got a whole bunch of... Yeah. So while Claire does that, remember you can obviously cook with us, get the ingredients, get the recipe on our beautiful website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. We're going to 
pop these into, pop them into the fridge. And like I said, it is going to take three to four hours or if you have the time overnight. Okay. So we have made a few just to sort of finish them off and eat them later. And then what happens after this, Claire? Uh, this step. Mm. Straight into the fridge. Straight into the fridge. And then we carry on licking at the leftovers. We carry on licking. <laughs> We're going to lick all of this stuff, right? In the meantime, like I said earlier, we have a very exciting fashion series that we'll be introducing to you right now on Afternoon Express, proudly brought to you by Skip. If you are a woman that is in love with fashion, but you do not know how to identify your significant signature style, well, Alexis Chaffe May and Bonnie have all the answers straight to the lounge. Thank you, Bonang. Those of you who love fashion, kick off those heels and settle in. Today is the first episode of our fabulous new Skip fashion series, exploring exactly what makes our style exceptional in each of South Africa's beautiful cities. And joining us in the loft today is fashion expert Alexis Chaffe May, who will be sharing her insight into style throughout the series. So, what is signature style? What is fabulous style? Well, fabulous style really is the X factor of fashion, if you like. Uh -huh. You know, it's knowing how to make your wardrobe work for you and understanding just how much fashion can do when you combine it in the right way to attract the eye. So cut, color, the combination of your mm -hmm. outfit, all those factors combined make for a statement look. And that's the moment when you walk into a room and all eyes are on you. That's when you're sharing your fabulous style with the world. And you know, I always say a woman of fabulous style, uh -huh. she knows who she is, she knows what she likes, yes. but it's probably taken her quite a while to get there. Yes, so it now does that, take a while. Now yeah. that she's found it, she is definitely gonna treasure it. And you know, I, I think women with fabulous style, you need to look after your clothes the same way you look after your hair or your nails. Yeah, of course, and she recognizes it immediately when she spots it, right? Yes, Right. it's instinctual. It sounds like power dressing. Tell us a bit about power yes. dressing. Yes, so power dressing is really fabulous dressing for the office or the workplace. Mm. You know, mm. and really, the word is in that it's power. You need to feel powerful in what you're wearing. You need to feel assertive. So it's about sharp tailoring, you know, crisp, clean mm. fabrics, attention to detail. Never sell yourself short in the office space, you know? Right. You need to put your best foot forward because first impressions really do last. Yeah. And you should yeah. always dress for the job you want. So for women out there watching who's struggling to find their own signature unique style, mm -hmm. how would you advise them? You know, I think you need to experiment, but okay. you also need to be really honest with yourself because not all trends and not all styles are, are going everyone. to suit you yeah. exactly yeah. or your body type. Yeah. And this may change several times in your lifetime. So, you know, you need to kind of, you know, be honest with yourself, be your own best friend. So I think start with what you have already before you dash okay. out and spend a fortune. Look at what you have. Mm -hmm. A lot of women hoard clothes that don't fit them, mm -hmm. that don't really suit them anymore, or if they're honest, they don't really like. So if you have these items in your closet, they're yeah. just taking up space. You know, it's time to get rid of them. Or if they're still in good condition, you can swap them with friends, you can trade them in, you can maybe get a little bit of money for them if right, they're valuable. Yeah. So once you've weeded out all of that and you've sorted out the foundation of your wardrobe, okay. then you can start to play a bit, try things on, make a list of some key basics that you staples, think... Staples, yeah. Staples, yeah. yes, that you think yeah. you still need to invest in okay. so that you can give your wardrobe maybe a little bit more versatility, a little bit more interest. Right. And then, of course, you need to adore accessories. Yes, because of course. Because <laughs> a stunning statement accessory, mm -hmm. it really can take a very simple look and then give it that like fabulous factor. Yes. And never stop on grasping and gaining that inspiration. You know, so street style, so important yeah. for giving you a fresh perspective on yeah. how to wear a look, giving something, maybe an old look that you've worn quite often, uh -huh. just a new little twist. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Pinterest, um, Blogs, Just keep, fashion yeah, magazines. all that inspiration. Absolutely, that's yeah. what they're for. Yeah. You know, soak it in. Then once you've got your, your beautiful basics that you love, your statement pieces and lots of inspiration, then you can... You can start playing. Ex exactly, yes. playing. I love that word. Yes. You know, play with your wardrobe, find mm -hmm. what you love and find what suits you. Because it's when you find what suits you within that fashion spectrum, that's when you find your signature style. And what's interesting is that style is influenced by what, what city you live in. Yes. yes. No, it absolutely is. It's very interesting that where we live really does 
change the way that we dress. Right. And it's not just, you know, climate factors, because mm -hmm. there's a lot in seasons. If you have seasons or if you don't have seasons where you live, that can affect, you know, the weight of the fabric that you choose, the colors that you wear. But there's wow. also some cultural and even sociological factors that weigh in. For example, Josie, the city of gold, uh -huh. is definitely known Blin. for its bling. Yes. The girls are definitely a bit more out there, but they also are very quick to embrace our local designers. Mm. A lot more girls based in Johannesburg will wear South African designers. Um, whereas, you know, Cape Town has a huge attraction of um, European visitors. Right. And we do have yes. a more um, international feel, laid back, a little bit more muted color palette, um, ah, more yeah. subtly maybe brand that's snobs. So yeah. Whereas Durban is amazing because they have this incredible Eastern culture that's also there. And you'll see that your, your Durban woman, really, they gravitate towards color and it's print vibrant. and embellishment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and of yeah, course, yeah. lighter fabric because it's a warmer climate. Wow, it's such an interesting subject that, and I'm sure there's so much to unpack, which we will be doing throughout the fashion series as we go yes. in different cities, yes. right? Yes, yes. And of course, Skip is getting involved in fashion this year. Please tell us about it. So yes, so Skip will be collaborating with three amazing designers, all wow. young, hot designers from Cape Town, Joburg, uh -huh. and Durban. And they'll each be designing a collection that is inspired by and specifically designed for the woman of that city. So oh, we're wow, that is so cool. Really what an innovative idea. Yeah. It's a very, yeah. very interesting yeah. idea. I can't wait to see the results. Oh and of gosh. course, we'll be showing them off here in the loft, as well as at the Fashion Exchange event, which is going to be in Joburg in August. So that's going to be fabulous. Wow, such exciting stuff. I'm really looking forward to no, it. Absolutely. I think yeah. it's projects like this that really focus on fashion that Skip is very passionate about because they understand women's connection to yes, clothes. Yeah. And that fashion is very, very precious. And really, it is our, sky, our style that makes us fabulous. And they just get that, you know? Yeah, they do. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Alexis. Pleasure to be here. Life's too short to be anything other than fabulous, so make sure you tune into the show every Thursday to keep up with the Skip Fashion Series. Stay right where you are, because after the break, we're joined by fashion icon, Jenny Button. Express yourself. I'm New Skip, and I love what you're wearing. You Skip Liquid for beautiful clothes. Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. In case you just tuned in today, it's all about fashion, it's all about beauty. A little bit later, we're going to be talking about some very tricky, weird, strange beauty treatments that women, you know, do to make sure they look beautiful. But right now, a beautiful woman who creates beautiful clothing is in the loft with us today. She opened her first clothing store in Adderley Street, Cape Town, all the way back in 1983. And today, 32 years later, she's one of the biggest names of the South African fashion scene. Joining me on the couch is designer and fashion fashion icon, Jenny Button. Lovely to have you. Lovely Thank to you. see you. Thank Absolutely you. beautiful. But Jenny, you know the thing is, right, a lot of people, and when I was telling my friends about this a couple of weeks ago, they didn't believe me, that they still associate you with the brand Jenny Button. But that, of course, changed, you know, a, a very long time ago. Can you tell us so we can clear out there for the very last time what happened there? Well, I think the association is still powerful because mm. my name is obviously still attached to the brand. And without sounding too terribly cheeky, I mean, I did work very hard at building a very powerful brand. So, um, yeah, so that's the association. Mm. But um, in the year 2000, I left Jenny Button to start something new. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, unfortunately, it was one of those really sad stories where I lost everything and oh. I lost my company and my name. And, uh, oh. and that's just the way the cookie crumbled then. But how do you feel walking past the Jenny Button store? I try every not other? to walk past them. Okay. <laughs> really? You can't. You move the, the other way around. I haven't got time to walk past Jenny Button yeah. stores. I, in fact, I don't have time to to go around anyway. We're so busy with philosophy. Absolutely. Let's talk about that before we get into philosophy. You, you, uh, philosophy. You're a woman of first. 28 years ago, when no one knew what the hell a trunk show was, you were hosting trunk shows. So for somebody that has never been to a trunk show, explain it to them. Just in you know, a couple of sentences, what exactly happens at a trunk show? Well, a trunk show is just that. You basically pack clothing into a big trunk or several big trunks, and you ship the trunks to your destination or your location or mm -hmm. a hotel. Or normally, it was somebody's home. Um, and that's really how I started. And it all started in Durban with my two agents where I didn't have a store in Durban then. Yeah. And they wanted, for, oh, they wanted Jenny Button in Durban then. 
and um, and I just packed trunks and we shipped it and we credit card machine came out and everything was fantastic and I mean we've just had a stampede ever since then and 28 wow. years later I am still doing trunk shows are you still yeah. enjoying them you know they're very tiring but I, I love doing the ones in New York and in mm. LA and San Francisco San Diego Phoenix um, those are very, very exciting, but it, it's terribly exhausting. Why is it? Is it because the women there, do they have a, a bigger love and obsession with fashion more than South African women, would you say? I think the fact that you're just different. You know, mm. you look, you're, you're, you speak differently and you look, your look is different. And the fact that you're exotic and you're from Africa. Yeah, they find you intriguing and, and captivating. leopard. They <laughs> love it. And yeah. talking about so, leopard, yeah. this is why I wore my leopard lubies today, because Jenny Button has an obsession with leopard. And if you know her collection and her line, philosophy is all about leopard print. So let's talk about philosophy. What is the philosophy behind philosophy? Uh, <laughs> philosophy really is for women on the move. It's uh -huh. because life has become so fast-paced. I mean, I, I design for myself, and I know I no longer have the need to wear a suit and uh -huh. match it with a shirt and, a, you know, all the paraphernalia that goes with suits, even though I kind of invented them uh, yeah. many, many years ago. <laughs> and it had its place then, but now everything is about comfortable, quick, easy dressing where yeah. I literally throw on a dress, and that's it. It's a dress, it's a pair of shoes, boots, and off you go. And I mean, you know, you create just such amazing fairy tale stories. Philosophy again blowing up and becoming, you know, what it is today. Even making inroads in Australia. How's that going? How that's did going, that come about? Well, that's amazing. It's, uh, I shouldn't really be talking about it yet because uh, it it's exclusive. just happened. But I went over last year in October yeah. and went to Sydney, Noosa and Brisbane. And my sister lives there, so we've got some family there. And, and I just did a bit of research and a little bit of inroads, so something big is about to happen. Girl, you need to tell us. Come to Afternoon Express first, right? But we do have a, a couple of items from your collection philosophy. But before we show the items, how would you describe the, the clothing that you make and what kind of woman would wear uh, the, the clothes you make? Well, firstly, it's a confident woman and a woman who's very aware of her body image and uh, proud to show her body. So, you know, that really is what philosophy is all about. Um, I also love print. Uh, I was about to ask you, what's your obsession with print? I, you know, Leopard I think, print, animal print. I think after the whole Jenny Button experience of being grey and torpid beige and black mm. and just being very, very monochromatic, mm. and it had its place then. All of a sudden, I felt like print was going to be my new artistic expression. And, and I mean, being an artist, it really, it's been the most fantastic ride. And I love, I love like working it. with print. I'm very inspired by Etro, by Cavalli. Ah, and yes. so I just, the minute I see fabric, I, I go gaga. I mean, I can sit and work all night. It's, it still inspires me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is very expressive, right? The, you know, the print and how you mash the prints and the fur and the textures. That's what I really love about the, the items you make. But I know it was, it's also inspired by your cat. Oh, yes. Ozzy. Oslo, oh, yes. Ozzy, yeah. Ozzy. Very popular on social media. Oh, yeah, very. <laughs> She's probably been pinned about 870 <laughs> times. I know, it's crazy. Really. I know who she is <laughs> because I follow her and watch her life on Pinterest. Oh, no, she's a wonderful cat. Yeah. I actually have three. And she's a Bengal, and she is just, she looks just like your shoes. Just like my yeah. shoes. Something else that looks just like my shoes is the brand new philosophy collection. So let's see what you have brought for us. I hope you, you brought us some leopard print. I did. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's bring the models out time to show us those gorgeous. Oh, that is really beautiful. Okay, so that's our first look, which is mm -hmm. a bodycon neoprene dress. And it gets worn with a um, biker jacket, yeah. also lined in silk lining. And you can take that from the office straight to dinner. Yeah, and then straight to the club, to the club. as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so easy to wear. Uh -huh. And the thing is, what I love about your your um, your garments, also quite easy to travel with. Yes, I very. could pack that in a duffel bag, right? So Get easy. Get off the plane, put it on, and voila. And into the washing machine, tumble dryer, yeah. done. Which is amazing. Our second look is mm -hmm. a lace dress, a boob tube lace dress. And it's very, very easy to wear. Lots of lycra in there. So it fits all sorts of bodies. That is what I love as well. And it's easy to put on, put off. I see what you, what the philosophy yeah, behind yeah. philosophy. It's easy. Easy to wear yeah. one, you know, one piece, put it on, put it off. Mm -hmm. Easy to wash. Very easy. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. But that's for women on the move. <gasps> 
Okay, now okay. this is so me. <laughs> now this is one of our Couturier collections and um, it's actually part of the bridal collection as well as the Matric Dance collection. These totally get made by hand. Wow. They are hugely labor intensive. Yeah. It's a lot of lace that's been cut out, sewn down onto tulle, and those are made to order. They're really, bespoke. really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I would change that into something pink if I was in matric and off I go, pop, pink lips, some stilettos, I'm good to party mm -hmm. on my matric mm -hmm. dance. <laughs> I'm loving this. Oh, yay. You didn't tell me you had Melinda. <laughs> yes, gorgeous Melinda. And she's wearing a long lycra, it's a viscose lycra dress, mm. also leopard, very, very cavalli print. Oh, and of course, the faux fur stole to yeah. go with it. Yeah. That is absolutely spectacular, especially for winter yes, as well. Yes. So cozy, once again, easy to wear, easy to travel with, easy to... Easy to pack. To wash, yeah. easy to pop absolutely. into the laundry and you're good to go. Yeah. Well, that so. is fantastic, Jamie. Thank you so much. And thank you to our beautiful models. Well, there you go. Hopefully, we've inspired you, you know, <laughs> to get out there and make sure you look the part. Jenny, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you. You're not going here. We're going to be chatting to her a little bit later. If you want to see all the looks and, of course, more information on our lovely guests, just log on to our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. From sweet fashion to sweet desserts. Jenny. No, not Jenny. Jenny is in the kitchen. <laughs> same difference, Bonang. We sound the same anyway. And leopard is my favorite color. <laughs> now, Claire, welcome back. We're going to be making the tiramisu panna cotta. Panna cotta. Absolutely. So delicious. we've actually really made the panna cotta part of it. Now we kind of bringing in those authentic flavors, which is the coffee side of things. So this mm. is going to be delicious coffee sauce that we're going to pour over the panna cotta. Teach me, <laughs> teach me. <laughs> so I'm going to get you to do all the stirring. So we've okay. got our pan on. And this is what the two shots of espresso, roughly. We're going to pop in the pan there. Nice and hot. Mm. Then in goes our mascarpone sugar, rich and caramelly. It's such a fantastic flavor to add into any sort of caramel sauce. I love how it actually moves when you look at it. It does. Up. So you can start stirring. So that's going to start melting up All that right. sugar. And then in goes a nice big blob of butter. So then that just is going to melt and in I'm there. And just melting this. That's I'm just going to turn that heat up a little bit. Remember, if you going. are at home cooking with us, visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and uh, get our shopping list and full list of ingredients. And, of course, also a step-by-step -step recipe so that it's just as easy for you to do this at home. Okay, so that's starting to sort of melt down. You're looking for the granules of the sugar to disappear. You're looking for the butter to sort of disappear. And that's going to create that caramel sauce. Yeah. If, you, if you have the time to wait, you can actually, reduce that sauce down a bit and it'll get nice and thick and caramelly or you can leave it as a pouring sauce it's it's really the same fabulous flavors it's just up to you so we're just going to let that sort of yeah. simmer down a little bit and then in goes our cream so that's going to add a richness and velvetiness to it oh delicious and then a cool little trick when you're doing anything with chocolate or i even find with coffee sugar is to add a pinch of salt Sounds bizarre. What does that do to it? But think of like your typical sort of caramel, salty caramel sweets, salty caramel ice creams, mm. those kind of things. It's there for a reason because it really enhances the flavor. So this is effectively a coffee caramel sauce. A little bit of salt and that's just going to bring those flavors out completely. Delish. And that's it. We're just going to let that bubble away slightly, then cool it down because you don't want to add a hot, hot sauce onto your panna cotta because it is cool and it'll actually melt your panna cotta. Well, while we do that, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go away because after the break, we're taking a look at some of the craziest things women do in the name of beauty. We'll be right back. South Africa, are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express here in the loft on SABC3. Usually beauty treatment is relaxing and rejuvenating, but today we're going to show you some of the most bizarre treatments that women endure to enhance their beauty. <laughs> some of this stuff is crazy. Really, what is, really what is, is the craziest things you girls have ever done, firstly, in the name of beauty? Um, yeah. <laughs> something too crazy. 
No, it's just the usual, usual disgusting mud wraps and seaweed. Wraps okay, no, that's not like that. But it's not just yeah. it's not yeah, disgusting. It's just uncomfortable. No, it's lovely, but it's uncomfortable and it's green and gross. But what? <laughs> <laughs> but it's. I mean, everybody can do it. But Jenny, yes. have you done anything that you know is weird and wonderful? Well, I mean. You're definitely a baby. I'm a bit older than you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, well, I mean, the usual Botox. I mean, that's pretty mm. painful. Is that so? I hate it. I find it very painful. <laughs> but we have to do it. But is it worth it? Apparently, I haven't had it done for a while. Look at the women. Obviously, <laughs> Something that's also quite painful is something called the vampire facial. Now, we've seen the likes of Kim Kardashian, you know, exploring this. Take a look. Kimmy gets a vampire facial. During the unconventional procedure, blood is taken from the 32-year-old's arm, spun so the platelets are removed and injected into her face with small needles. Kim squeals in pain when she undergoes the experience and even cries. So was it worth it? Oh my God, I will never get a face left if it feels like that. Well, there you go, all right? I can't. The vampire oh facial, <laughs> also known as the skin plasma rejuvenation. I'm already like, Ugh. That is disgusting. Okay, that is so Apparently disgusting. Apparently, it's been around for 20 years. Oh, oh, and then the the of those needles coming onto your face like this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need that work? is no. beyond cross. Well, we don't know if it works because, I mean, we didn't, nobody was, you know, following Kim Kardashian after that to see the befores and afters because she's literally is flawless. She is magnificent, yeah. but also she's done so much work to her face that she's a little bit like this now. No. <laughs> We're talking about her skin. But I Jenny, know. looking at that, do you think you'd ever try no. yourself, Melinda, the vampire facial? No. Le uh, no, I'll just pass out thinking about the vampire oh, facial. It's disgusting. It's revolting. I don't know. Yeah. No. But, no. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> medical experts have said that it's used to treat wounds, to treat burns, to rejuvenate your skin, and, of course, you yeah. know, give you a young, plumpier, beautiful, more smooth very healing to your tissue. Okay, there's another one. Have you heard of the... The poop facial. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> I have heard of a couple of people who've done it. Harry Styles, right? Yeah. Tom Cruise, who else? Yeah. But yeah. he's done some crazy things, okay? <laughs> he's not any bar to go by. I mean, that would be quite a creepy honest. experience. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can you imagine what it smells like? Oh, yeah, I, can, I can't even imagine how it smells like. Well, I think the, the, the upside about it is people don't want to get close to you. They won't even care what your skin looks like because they can't even stand the smell going even closer to see the pores on your nose, nothing. Do you know what no. I did do once? In, um, I, I went with Top Travel, we went to New Zealand to the place of the earth where the crust is the thinnest, so they've got these sulfur pools everywhere. Okay, that's Apparently, sulfur. when you go into these sulfur pools, it's rejuvenating yeah. and that's it makes your deep. skin beautiful. Yes. yes. But it stinks, right? Until you right? and for days afterwards, you literally reek. Of fart eggs and oh, fart. That is <laughs> it is so disgusting. Thank goodness Fantastic. I don't know anyone in New Zealand because I was reeking. <laughs> oh, it was bad. <laughs> It was New Zealand pong of note. New Zealand oh. pong of note. The poop <laughs> facial. <laughs> and then there's something else. And uh, I know that you are going to be our volunteer for the day because I thought, oh, what, what I? kind of <laughs> gift can we give a beauty queen? And Jenny, you, you're being excluded from this just because of your fabulous shoes. Yeah. Yes. But Melinda, I know that this is something that you've always wanted to do. And as a beauty really? queen, we thought, what kind of treatment can we give the most beautiful girl in the country? <laughs> yeah. So the we can't really fix perfect. anything from here. But... Maybe down there. You know <laughs> this about me. You know I hate my feet. Nobody likes you their feet. Notice. <laughs> All right, so, so take but, it away. Um, <laughs> if you can uh. come with me, we actually have the ever so fabulous Lanza Rack Spa, who's come to give us something fishy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lizette, oh how are you? Goodness. Fine, the, thank you. What exactly is this treatment? The Dr. Fish pedicure is basically the Goro Rufa fish, and they nibble on the dry skin on the bottoms of your feet. Are you ready for this? No, don't think okay. I ever will. <laughs> You're going to have to clean your feet off. I've already done this. And the reason for this is the fish are quite sensitive to any lotions or anything on your feet. So you've got to make sure that you've got clean feet. They're sensitive to lotion, then. but they eat feet. Great. Yes, Lovely. pure feet. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so what is the process? We just sit... And to submerge. Take off your shoes and slowly submerge your feet into the tanks. So you've got a warm towel there. Your feet are going to be clean. No. Not that your feet are ever dirty. Yes, I know. <laughs> I 
Okay. complete with these. Is this going to be sore? Not at all. They don't have teeth. So what they have, they form a saliva in their mouths, and that is an enzyme that dissolves the dead skin cells, and that is the, what they feed on. I'm quite I scared. Can't, uh, I can't imagine the first critter coming and nibbling at your feet. We're doing this okay, together right. so that they nibble at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> just put them in. Just both. Two at once. Two at once. Uh, Maybe they're a little scared. They're all swimming to Maybe. one side. Oh, but that first bite is going to no. be, like, weird. We don't have any we dead skin have on dead our feet, skin. apparently. <laughs> have you gotten a bite yet? No. No, me neither. Shoot. We're a little bit wary of our feet. <laughs> I got one, I got one, I got one. Okay, I'm really scared now. It's coming closer. <gasps> okay, wait. It's no, coming closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, no. yes, they're there, they're there. Oh, no. my goodness gracious <laughs> me. <laughs> this is quite amazing. You know what's happening here? They are actually taking revenge for all the sushi that I've eaten in my life. <laughs> oh, no. That's it's horrible. It's actually just quite ticklish. Oh, oh, that's so ticklish. <laughs> this is extremely... Okay, so, I mean, how often should you do this? Do you do this in place of a pedicure instead of the scrape? Um, oh. You would do this in the place of that. It aids in that. But the therapist will still do the um, hot skin removal afterwards. <laughs> so, with, do they know where to bite? Like they find the zones. <laughs> they find the zones of the dry skin. <gasps> yes, they they <laughs> literally go to the areas which have the dry skin. So that is what they are attracted to, and that is what they will nibble on. Does everybody find this completely hysterical? <laughs> <laughs> Most people do for the first minute, and then they relax and they get used to it. Okay, no. how, do, how are you finding this? So no, far? not relaxing. Not <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I ah. find this is... Oh, they're actually quite sweet. They're just tickling me. <laughs> yes, while they're mauling away and having main course. Oh, well, thank you so much for, for this experience. I think I'm done. Um, but I will definitely come and visit you at the Lanzarex Bar for, to complete Please this, this fishy experience. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we finish up in the kitchen and Alexis joins us on the couch game to chat about appropriate fashion for the workplace. Don't go away. Back, you're watching Afternoon Express on SABC3. Just in time for us to put the finishing touches on our beautiful Italian dessert with Claire right here in the kitchen. So what are the last couple of things we need to do? So I'm going to get you to pour on some of that coffee sauce that we've just sort of mm -hmm. chilled a little bit. How and much do I pour in? Actually, almost a layer. Because the, oh, exactly. exactly. the whole thing with tiramisu... Exactly. The whole thing with tiramisu is that these sponge fingers soak into the sauce, into the coffee. So we're mm -hmm. going to try and sort of replicate that in there, oh, just right. break those into there, and that's gonna soak up and just really take on all that coffee flavor. This looks divine, perfect for winter, I just should say. Comfort food, in there. right? Comfort food, ooh, there we go. Be careful it's there, Claire. Feeding the fish. Are you trying to get the fish? It'll <laughs> <laughs> be next to us right here. All right, one more to go. And one more over there. Mm -hmm. Yum, there you go. And then just <gasps> that looks divine. Break some of that inside, you wanna grab a Okay, so you just literally thing. Break. Break it in and then it's just going to soak into that sauce. And that's oh, it. Yum. Okay. Nice and simple. Pretty. And like I said, you can make it in any glass, bowl, yeah. dish, whatever you have, and then just chill it in the fridge. These are the ones we made Fantastic. earlier. Fantastic. All right, what while Claire and I do the last bit of <laughs> decorating on our beautiful dessert, don't forget you can find all the information, all the recipes, and of course the method on our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. But right now, we're going to be throwing it back to the lounge to give you a wrap-up with our ladies. What's happening, lady? Thank you so much, Bonang. Now, how is this for probably one of the most fashionable panels ever? Melinda Bam, you. Jenny Button, Alexa Chafeme. Thank you so much for coming through today, ladies. Really, it was a great, very fashionably inspiring day. Mm. And a, a very, Can I very feed you? <laughs> you may. You take one. There you go. Thank you so much, Jenny. Oh, oh there's some it looks dessert. Divine. I know. I know. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right.
Wait, let me come through this. Do you way. know what the problem with this is? This yes. is how our day okay. starts. We start off with breakfast, a little Bulgarian yogurt, Thank a little bit of fruit. Bean. Then for lunch, yes. we have a little salad. And then for the rest of the day, we just eat everything in the fridge and everything yeah. that, that Claire makes us. That's how it works. And then Sounds after wonderful. we've eaten, we get Alexis Chaffee made to come here and tell us what to wear so we can fit into our clothes. <laughs> and then we got a Jenny and tell her what to design so we can fit into Jenny, our clothes. Jenny, please, can you, can, can you give us more stretch fabric <laughs> to tell us how much we can lose, how we can lose weight while eating every single thing that's on the set. All of that on Afternoon Express. Yeah. <laughs> but Alexis, before you go, you know, there's a saying that you dress the way you want to be addressed. So mm. what, to any woman that's watching right now, what do you wear to work and what would you say are maybe three or four rules they need to stick to when you, you know, want that position or want that job or want to get into a space and want to be taken mm -hmm. seriously? Some do's and don'ts. Yep. You know, I said it earlier and I will say it a million times, you have got to dress for the job that you want. Mm. Nobody ever said, well, I'm not going to give her the promotion because she dresses too well. I mean, oh, no. <laughs> heard never. Yeah. So really, I mean, dress aim to dress a little bit better than everybody else at the office. You know, mm -hmm. you need to set the standard, but not so over the top that you get like, you know, side looks and like people start <laughs> judging you. Yeah. Really, you know, make the effort. You know, there's no ever, unless you work in a gym, there's really never a reason to be wearing a tracksuit yeah. or any kind right. of sport apparel <laughs> to the office. It's a professional place. You want to be taken seriously. Yeah. And I think it starts with what you wear. You know, if you look like you've put yourself together and like you're taking care of yourself, people will appreciate that you're going to take care of the work or the job that you need to do. What happens if you're starting a new job? What kind of impressions would yeah. you want to set and what yeah. you should, what uh, you, you be wearing? Especially walking into a space where you don't you know do, anybody. You don't sure. want to offend them. You want to, mm. you know, don't look too overpowering Not and intimidating. intimidating. Yeah. Absolute, sure abso brain, <laughs> absolutely though, because every office has a different set of rules when it comes to dress code, even if it's kind of like what the cool girls are wearing, mm. what everyone else is. So I say if you're starting a new job go like fairly plain I don't mean plain Jane but I mean go in your neutrals go in yeah. something that's classic and crisp and maybe you know kind of dial down a little bit watch what everyone else is wearing and if you see okay girls are wearing jeans to the office or it's a strictly suit environment okay, then, then you know how to dress on day two and do you always <laughs> dress your best all the time or do you kind of like tone it down when maybe you've got a disciplinary hearing or you want to ask for a raise <laughs> well, <that's laughs> really discuss what's going on in your life <laughs> times when it's just time to just pull back a little bit you know use your clothing to motivate yourself so mm -hmm. if you're giving a big presentation <laughs> dress the part you know wear <laughs> the power suit but no if you're in trouble for any reason then Don't definitely in a big red hat no, maybe a tail <laughs> between the legs and never too much skin never never too much no skin. what ifs <laughs> 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 now, Melinda, I want to know, when, do you feel pressure to always be in Miss South Africa when you walk into a room? Um, you know what? I don't think it's pressure. I think um, I wear my style every single day because I think it is an extension of your personality. And I don't want a, a day to go by where I didn't actually feel good about myself and, and show the world who I am. And I, I think especially in this industry... There's a saying that a book gets judged by its cover, so why not tell yes. the world who you are by what you look like every Absolutely. single day? So walk up straight, have a great posture, yeah. wear it with style, wear it with confidence, and that's the only pressure you should have, is just actually representing yourself yeah. as a brand well. And Jenny, you know, as a fashion designer and a woman who's been so successful in fashion, when you are around other women or people in general, do you find that they come to you and ask you for advice or expect you to give them, you know, do's and don'ts as you kind like of... Like a doyen. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, as a doyen, <laughs> just in your everyday life. Like, let me go buy groceries or bread. And somebody's like, Jenny, do you get that? <laughs> I think one of the funniest things that's always been when you're in Woolworths or shopping somewhere, right. you always have someone finding you yes. in the aisle, sneaking up to see what you've got in your shopping basket <laughs> and then of course wow. then they tell you about the suits that they bought 20 years ago or mm -hmm. they're still wearing so they love philosophy or they love their dress and that's very very inspiring awesome. actually funny enough uh, this last holiday in Plet, I was walking past Jenny's store uh -huh. and I didn't realize she was going to be there and 
I hardly ever do this, but I was in flip-flops and like ripped denim <laughs> shorts and a ripped t-shirt. And when I saw her, I actually wanted to literally Duck. hide behind yeah. a pillar, yeah. thinking, I'm going to be judged hard right now. <laughs> me, my mother always says to me, it's the best advice she ever gave me. She said, wherever you go, yeah. make sure you look amazing, even mm -hmm. if it's just to pick up bread at the store. Exactly. Yeah, my mom yeah. always says that because you might just run into your future you husband. You never know who you're going to run yeah, into. Yeah, I didn't hide. She caught me first. She was like, Janie, come on in. I was like, oh. <laughs> Anyway, Jenny, thank you, you so good. much for coming through. Belinda Bam, thank you very, very much. Alexis Chaffe May, we're going to be seeing more of her as we continue with our brand new mm -hmm. fashion series, mm -hmm. proudly brought to you by Skip right here mm -hmm. on Afternoon Express. And of course, to our queen, Claire, all the way in the kitchen, thank you very much for our delicious Italian desserts. Yes, my personal trainer can't bear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been another fantastic episode of Afternoon Express. Do join us again tomorrow, 4 p.m. right here on SABC3. From all of us in the loft, it's good evening and happy, happy eating. eating. Good Ciao. night. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, controversial Metro FM DJ Thibaut Touch is in the loft. We speak with South African singing legend Judith Sapuma about her current national tour. Another feel-good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.